but let's say this one time they were really creative and they came up with this and and they decide okay let's launch something that potentially could destroy governments and central banks it, it makes no sense whatsoever uh, and not to mention that they're printing so much money that even in, in 10 years those dollars won't be worth anything anyway A lot of people out there, especially truthers, are, are uh, discussing that cryptocurrency, uh, especially Bitcoin, is a is a uh, entity or uh, the start of a CIA op or something like that. And I heard your last uh, interview saying that that's a ridiculous notion. Could you just uh, uh, expound on that a little bit? Sure. Um... I guess, first of all, I'd, I'd like to say that I'm glad that everyone out there is questioning everything. I remember about 10 years ago, uh, no one was questioning anything, it seemed. Uh, there was a few of us around questioning 9-11. Uh, even us, we were quite mocked. Uh, and there was, you know, I, I was bringing up things like the Federal Reserve. And even 10 or 15 years ago, most people didn't even know what that was. They never even noticed on the back of the $1 bills, that pyramid with the all-seeing eye or anything. And uh, and all the uh, sort of false flags. And, of course, 9-11 was the biggest false flag in, in my generation that I know of. And... Um, uh, but, but there's been many, many more since then, and I'd always point out, hey, this looks like totally not what they said it was as well. And, you know, 10 years ago, I was kind of looked at upon as kind of crazy. Uh, a lot of people just thought, uh, you know, well, he just doesn't believe what he's told on the television programming. And and uh, I'm so glad to see that in the last couple of years, there's just been a massive change. I don't know what exactly happened, but now when there's something like, for example, there was that shooting in Las Vegas uh, a couple months ago, and uh, within minutes, Everyone on my Facebook wall, and I've got 5,000 Facebook friends and about 15,000 followers, so about 20,000 people. But literally every post I saw was people questioning it and saying, this is probably CIA or FBI. And I uh, hear, look at this, I found this evidence that this isn't what it was and all this sort of thing. And so we've, we've seen a total shift in that everyone is, seems to be questioning everything now, which I think is great. And that's exactly what I've been doing. And that's what I started doing actually pretty much right after I found out about both the Federal Reserve and 9-11 uh, was a false flag. When I figured out both of those, I was like, what else isn't what they told us? And it turns out pretty much absolutely everything <laughs> isn't what they told us. So I have no problem at all with people questioning things. And um, and so it's, it's kind of expected, uh, to, and I was kind of expecting this to happen at some point, uh, that people would say, okay, Bitcoin is a government psyop or something along those lines. And don't get me wrong, like most things are, uh, but I, I can't see uh, Bitcoin being one. Uh, the main reason being that the, the whole power behind the central banks and the government is their ability to print money. That is uh, how they've retained this control and how they can do all these wars and how they can control so many people. They control every government because of it. It's the banksters that really control it because they can control the, the money. And that it was uh, uh, Lord Rothschild who said centuries ago, I care not who makes the laws, I care who controls the money and I control the money and that's exactly the case and, and it really is the case today and I think most people would agree with this if you control really the money uh, you control most things because most people are easily paid off and that's what you see uh, with uh, all government all politicians like how many presidents have to go to the wailing wall in Israel before people kind of figure out okay there's something going on here these guys are kind of just paid off sort of shells uh, on behalf of uh, these people so uh, I have no problem at all with people saying that, uh, you know, uh, questioning Bitcoin, uh, but it makes no sense because Bitcoin really, uh, because of what it is, because it has a limited money supply, uh, even if they were to somehow be able to take control of it in some way or another, and even that is pretty difficult and, and almost really impossible fully to take over. But even if they were to take some sort of control of it, uh, which we're sort of seeing actually right now, we've seen some infiltrations into Bitcoin recently in the last year, uh, but they still can't uh, uh, increase the money supply. I guess they could if they took real control of Bitcoin, but it, this, the, the moment that they announced, okay, we're, we're, Bitcoin's not limited by 21 million anymore. We're going to make it so it's limitless and we decide when, it's, when it goes, Bitcoin will go to zero. Pretty much everyone will just sell their Bitcoin because that's the whole reason that most people own Bitcoin is because it has a limited money supply. That's why it has quite a bit of value is its scarcity. So 
the fact that people think that the government and the central banks would create this thing, which really limits their powers dramatically, makes no sense. So either they did, and we don't know who created it. This is where the real issue comes up, that there's so much question about who is Satoshi Nakamoto and who really created it. The point is that it's open source software, and it doesn't really matter who created it. But if it was, let's say, the central banks and the government, and they create a money that has never been created before and has never even been tried before, and they were somehow that ahead of the game, and they never are. They're, they're usually following uh, behind the markets, and they, they co-op things in the market. They're not very creative sort of people. But let's say this one time they were really creative, and they came up with this and and they decide okay let's launch something that potentially could destroy governments and central banks it, it makes no sense whatsoever but I understand why some people think that uh, because they don't understand uh, how it all works most people today don't understand Bitcoin whatsoever uh, I'd say 98 percent of pe people who are speculating or own Bitcoin have no idea what it really is <laughs> they, they're just you know for whatever reason they've heard about it they, they know it's going up in price so they've been buying some uh, hardly anyone's even used it uh, still uh, so, you know, th there's just, you know, if the government did and the central banks created Bitcoin, it was the biggest mistake in their history uh, because not only has Bitcoin uh, already starting to threaten their central banking system, but now we have thousands and thousands of other cryptocurrencies which are all <laughs> subjugating and going around the, the financial and monetary system, which spells the end for central banking. We're now over $600 billion market cap for all the cryptocurrencies combined. We're starting to get close to a trillion dollars. We're, when we're talking trillions, we're talking about a paradigm shift, a change in the monetary and financial system, and this is not good for the governments or central banks. So if they did create it, it was their big mis biggest mistake ever. Definitely the central banks and the governments are going to be very involved in this cryptocurrency blockchain sort of a space. So, uh, you know, it's kind of funny because a lot of the people who say Bitcoin is a government psyop, they're also like, yeah, but they're also going to uh, create their own digital currency to to compete with Bitcoin. It's like, well, it's, it's really one or the other. But, but forgetting aside, uh, putting aside like who created Bitcoin for the moment, it's obvious that uh, the governments and the central banks obviously want all uh, currency, all money transactions to be uh, on some sort of a digital blockchain uh, that they have access to because in that, in that way they can because we still unfortunately have very criminal entities in this world called governments which are just mafias that have violent control over enslaved people in certain geographic regions. If they can track every single transaction, every single purchase that anyone makes, and every every transaction that anyone makes, they could, as long as they have control, and, for, and like hopefully this doesn't last much longer, but there's still, unfortunately, governments, uh, and there's still, unfortunately, things called taxes, which is extortion. If they uh, still have that level of control and they can track every transaction, then they can they can essentially tax every transaction, which would be horrible. And this is what a lot of uh, people are talking about, about the war on cash. And I've been one of the biggest people talking about the war on cash. They obviously want to get rid of cash because the reason is uh, they can't track every transaction. Uh, uh, the fact of the matter is all these governments in the world are absolutely bankrupt. If they want to keep this going a little while longer, they need to get even more tax revenue, extortion revenue, to stay alive. Uh, and they've already brought down interest rates to 0% to or negative. They're already printing tons of money. That's going to turn into hyperinflation fairly quickly in the next couple of years. So we're going to see fiat currencies collapse. We're going to see governments collapse. As one of their last sort of attempts to keep this game going, they want to try to tax every single transaction, which will, of course, if they're successful, make the world into a horrendous place so it'll, it'll be just well it'd be like venezuela almost everywhere it'll just the economy will collapse it'll be horrible because uh, that's what it destroys economies when you have massive amounts of taxes massive amounts of regulation and massive amounts of money printing and and so of course yeah the governments and we've seen the central banks already announce uh, numerous uh, attempts at creating their own cryptocurrency we saw venezuela come out just recently and say they're going to make an oil-backed cryptocurrency after they destroyed two fiat currencies in the last 10 years uh, alone and they're going to destroy the, neck, the cryptocurrency, whatever it is as well, of course, uh, because they, they just continue to print money. So they'll, they'll create this cryptocurrency and just continue to print it. So, you know, when you're talking about uh, what the objective is of these people, the, you call them the globalists or the New World Order or the banksters, or there's all kinds of names, uh, Illuminati or Freemasons or Jesuits, uh, uh, Zionists, uh, all sort of related to the same sort of cabal uh, that has been controlling most things in the world for the last at least few hundred years, if not a few thousand years. Uh, that is their goal, absolutely. But uh, Bitcoin is has been a a uh, the biggest problem for them in history by far. The Internet was their first 
big problem because now they can't really control the supply of information very well. We've seen that. Uh, we're seeing the mainstream media just, even the president, you know, Donald Trump, you know, whatever you want to think about him, he even calls CNN fake news. And it is. And it's, it's all fake news. Everything on television programming is all fake news. It's propaganda. It's no different than North Korea. So we've seen that already happen. So they're already losing control of the narrative. Uh, and that's why we brought up earlier how everyone's questioning everything now. And that's great. That's wonderful. Uh, and now they're losing control of money. And that's even more important. That's way more important than losing control of the propaganda. And uh, that's why they're working so hard to try to get a hold of this thing. And they really can't. The only way to stop Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies is to turn off the power for the entire world or the Internet for the entire world. Both is really hard to do. Uh, but they are considering it. They, they do think about these things. This is how evil these people are and how much the, how power hungry they want. They want to uh, retain control uh, of these sort of things. So. Uh, you know, we're going to see, sorry, so all of a sudden someone's drilling. I'm going to have to tell somebody to stop that. As, as soon as I'm done talking, I'm going to put this on mute and go tell them to stop for a bit. Uh, but uh, the um, I guess everyone's back from Christmas now and back to work. But um, there was just one last point I wanted to make and see if I can remember now that this drilling noise is going on. But uh, about... Um, uh, oh, yes. Uh, you were talking about how uh, they've sort of co-opted uh, Bitcoin to some extent, AXA, the chairman of Bilderberg. Yeah, they haven't completely co-opted Bitcoin, but they've definitely done a good job of infiltrating and getting some changes made to Bitcoin that I don't think are very uh, good for Bitcoin. And that's things like what we've seen with SegWit, which has not been successful so far. And then next is the Lightning Network, which I, I think is not going to be successful whatsoever. And that's going to make Bitcoin slow and expensive pretty much forever. Ever, which is sort of their goal. They want to slow it down. So that's why uh, we need a lot of these other cryptocurrencies as well. And they're all doing really well. Uh, and a lot of them have a lot more privacy built into them, things like Monero and Zcash, which I both recommended to Dollar Vigilante subscribers. So yeah, the, the cat's out of the bag. This is an absolute war, and they're not going to go away easily uh, because this is really hitting at the root of their power, the money system. So yeah, this is going to be an absolute war. We're going to see all kinds of dirty tactics. We're probably going to see even people getting killed <laughs> during this process. They're not going to go away in them easily. Uh, this is attacking the root of their power, uh, and uh, but it, uh, this is what's going on. So we're at a phenomenal point in human history. We have not only ability now to get out the information about what's going on through the internet, but now we have ability to go around the financial and monetary system which they control, uh, which will end up uh, making it so central banks will go away, fiat currencies will go away. Uh, that makes it so big government is not possible. You can't have big government. That's how they, they, they finance most of the things they do is through the inflation of the things like the Federal Reserve. That's how the Department of Offense and the Pentagram is able to do all the things that they do. And all the wars, they just constant, constant uh, terrorist attacks and wars across the world that they do is all financed by inflation. If you take that away, the game's almost over for them and they realize it. So this is get, going to get nasty at the end here uh, as, as they realize and it's speeding up very fast. I can't believe how fast this is speeding up. If you would have told me what happened in 2017 and 2016, I wouldn't have believed you. If you would have told me all these cryptos would go up thousands of percent, tens of thousands of percent, some of them hundreds of thousands of percent, I was not expecting that uh, to happen so quickly. So this, the, this is happening very fast now. And thanks to the Internet, it's going to get faster and faster. And, and uh, we're going to see what happens. But I, I expect 2018 is not going to be a boring year whatsoever. Well, Jeff, in, in your last interview, didn't I hear you say that Ripple is one of those uh, currencies that they're trying to control? Uh, Ripple basically is a banker coin already. It, uh, I'm not a total expert on it. I, I've tried not to look into it too much because I know that it's, it's very banker related. So I just don't want anything to do with that kind of stuff. But it started off as a, as a fairly normal cryptocurrency, but they sold it out to the bankers. And uh, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what's going on with it, but it's absolutely skyrocketed in the last year. So it is possible that they want this cryptocurrency Ripple to be one of their sort of government's cryptocurrencies. Uh, so very, uh, uh, you know, we, the amount it's gone up has been so massive uh, that, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's it's been like the number two cryptocurrency in the last few days. It's sort of been right up there with Ethereum. 
Uh, so we'll see what happens. They uh, they might try to make that sort of like their their, their cryptocurrency that the government sort of controls. The, uh, I really don't understand it. Not many people do. There, it doesn't even really seem to be a blockchain. It doesn't seem to. You can't mine it. Uh, you can't. Uh, I'm not even sure if there's any limit on the amount of Ripple that could be created. There's right now about 40 billion Ripples out there. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah. And that's that's what I was thinking too. It's it's you know where where does it get its worth? You know right. I, I don't understand. It's on. It, there's an unlimited amount of it. Yeah, this could be the the banksters basically trying to make this their cryptocurrency and trying to get everyone into it. And so far, it seems to be working a little bit. It seems like people just gravitate to whatever is going up in price. And Ripple went up so much in value in the last year uh, that people just seem to be piling in. But I'm not sure exactly what's going on. It could be kind of a uh, a bit of a, a setup for people. They could end up just losing everything on this. And uh, But I really don't know. I don't know what's going on. I continue to look into Ripple because it's clear something's going on. We've seen the cryptocurrencies all fall in the last week or so, except for one, Ripple, which just keeps going up. Uh, so there's something going on there, and there's enough uh, questions about it that I know there's got to be something strange going on, but I'm still not sure exactly what's going on with Ripple. I heard a single buyer bought almost a billion dollars worth of Ripple a couple days ago, and it knocked it up to number two. Huh. Yeah, that's the thing. Like the central banks can print up as much money as they want. We saw that in 2008 when they just printed up like $10 trillion and gave it all to their banking friends. So they could just, if they wanted, like if I was a central bankster and I'm like, how do we uh, get rid of uh, Bitcoin and, and all these other cryptocurrencies? Uh, one of the ways would be to create something like Ripple and buy it up to the point that everyone's getting involved in it just because it's going up uh, and uh, and try to do it that way. So as you said, if a, a buyer came in and bought a billion dollars worth, for a central bank, that's like nothing. That's like the press of a button. They can create a trillion dollars. Uh, so they could do that. And one of my sort of theories about how they would try to destroy Bitcoin is that they would actually buy into Bitcoin. We've kind of seen possibly that to some extent so far. We've seen Jamie Demon of JP Morgan saying Bitcoin's going to go to, uh, I think he said uh, $100,000 and then it's going to collapse. Uh, so sometimes it's about what they're going to do. Uh, so they could buy a Bitcoin, for example, and just buy a trillion dollars worth of Bitcoin, which would make Bitcoin go up like 10 times or 20 or 30 times from where it is today. And all of a sudden the entire world would be all talking about Bitcoin. They'd all want Bitcoin. Uh, and then they could just slam it and sell it all. And then most people would lose most of their money and they'd be like, I'm never touching a cryptocurrency again. I lost all my money. I'm going to buy this government regulated one, which is Ripple or whatever. So these are the kinds of the sneaky tricks they're going to be doing. Absolutely. So that's what I'm all always on the lookout for is what their next step's going to be. And they, they're really smart. Like, I, I've been amazed how easily they kind of infiltrated Bitcoin so far, uh, like with what's gone on with AXA and Blockstream and things like that. It, it was like so easy. It was like a cakewalk. Uh, I can't like when you have this much power and this much money uh, and and they've been doing this for like centuries, these, these families uh, over and over, they've been doing it. They're, they're so s smart at taking over stuff. That's what they do. They're like, they infiltrate everything. And uh, I've been really amazed at how quickly and easily they've been able to infiltrate to some extent Bitcoin. We'll see if that continues or not. Uh, we've, of course, we, we're trying to let enough people know about what's going on so that they, they move away from that. And uh, for example, uh, perhaps even go to something like Bitcoin Cash instead of Bitcoin if this continues. Uh, because Bitcoin Cash, a lot of people say, well, uh, the fork in August was Bitcoin Cash forking off uh, from Bitcoin. Not really, because Bitcoin Cash stayed is pretty much how Bitcoin has been and how it was designed in the white paper. It just increased the block size, which is just totally normal uh, thing to do. And that would have re reduced um, uh, transaction fees and reduced uh, uh, the, the time it takes to do transactions. Whereas Bitcoin today has gone off and done some huge giant side thing with SegWit and this huge other thing with Lightning Network, which actually sort of turns into fractional reserve banking at some point. And and it's really, that's the fork from Bitcoin. That's the big change that happened in August 1st, uh, whereas Bitcoin Cash didn't. So we'll see what happens. This is an absolute and total war uh, going on, and it's going to continue. I, I have no doubt this is not going to be a boring year. Yeah. So you mentioned fees a little bit. Uh, Jeff, what fees are associated with Bitcoin, and where do these fees go? 
Well, every transaction uh, in Bitcoin has to be sort of uh, vetted or confirmed by a miner, and that's that's how all transactions happen. And so, uh, the way the Bitcoin is set up is that uh, miners get paid whenever they do a block. So every block, every 10 minutes, and those transactions all go into those blocks. So essentially when you do a Bitcoin transaction, uh, you uh, normally have to pay a certain amount to the miners in order for it to go through, which is fine and it's been that way since the beginning. Uh, although at the very beginning, Bitcoin really had no transaction fees uh, uh, at the beginning. But you know, as it grew, it, it started to have transaction fees. And it was very normal to have 10 cents, 5 cents, 25 cents on a $10,000 transfer, uh, even a $100,000 transfer, $1, sometimes $2. Uh, that was very normal up until last year. And then Bitcoin, all of a sudden, everyone in the world all of a sudden started to hear about it. It was sort of like the breakout year for Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. Uh, and so many people started getting into it. And of course, it went from about I think it was around $900 to start the year 2017 and ended the year uh, around 14000 It hit as high as 20000 So uh, a lot of people got involved in Bitcoin. All of a sudden, it was everywhere. You couldn't go anywhere without hearing about it. Everyone's getting into it. So the, tr the transactions went up tremendously. Uh, and because the block size was only one megabit, which is so ludicrous, that, that's what fits on like a floppy disk from the 1980s from like one of those Michael J. Fox movies and stuff. Like, like you remember those floppy disks? That's, that's what Bitcoin runs on that still to this day that's what it runs on it's and it's ridiculous and all they needed to do was just increase the block size and all these transactions would still be able to go through quite quickly and quite cheaply for we're talking cents or maybe a dollar or two instead they decided because uh, Bitcoin sort of been co-opted to some extent, I, I believe. Uh, I could be wrong. Or they're either been co-opted or they've been stupid. But they said, okay, we're not going to increase the block size from one megabit to like two megabits. That's too big. It's too risky, which makes no sense whatsoever. They, they talk about, oh, what about in 10 years when it's a t one terabyte or whatever? It's like, well, let's worry about that in 10 years. Uh, in 10 years, I'm sure one terabyte will be like a floppy disk of today. It'll be like nothing. It'll be like whatever. Who cares? Uh, but because they didn't increase the block size, they created all these other things, which actually is Blockstream, which sort of has been a, a big, uh, very influential in what goes into Bitcoin core code. Their whole business is based on Bitcoin being slow and expensive. And then they create these side chains where they profit from it. And that's things like Lightning Network, Network and all that. So they've already kind of co-opted uh, Bitcoin. And what we're seeing now, even to this day, is Bitcoin transactions sometimes taking days. I had one over Christmas that took like five days. Uh, and uh, I had one transaction fee. Uh, a dollar vigilante gets a lot of uh, people subscribing to the dollar vigilante in Bitcoin. So we get a lot of tra small transactions of like $100 or $200 or $50 sometimes. So I had like a, a Bitcoin wallet on mycelium, and I, it had like two Bitcoins on it from all these transactions that have been coming in over the months. Uh, and it was like 200 transactions, and we had like two Bitcoins on there, and I, I wanted to transfer it. The transaction fee for transferring that was over $2,000 to transfer two Bitcoins. Uh, so that's, that's where Bitcoin's at right now. And Bitcoin, they have no intention of... Uh, changing this dramatically. In fact, a lot of the Bitcoin core people say uh, high transaction fees are a good thing. It shows the value of the network. Like These people are not, they don't understand business or economics or marketing or anything. They're, they're just mostly coders uh, and, and they don't understand how the world works. And so yeah, we're, we're still with Bitcoin with high transaction fees. And because of that, you're seeing most of the businesses that started in the last few years, things like Bitcoin ATMs and things like BitPay and, and uh, all kinds of companies that uh, have Bitcoin-related businesses, they're all stopping uh, using Bitcoin for the business because they can't. Uh, you, most Bitcoin ATM owners are like, well, I can't do this. We can't have a transaction take like three days and cost $100 if someone wants to buy $300 worth of Bitcoin. It's just not going to work. So a lot of those are all switching over now to things like Bitcoin Cash and Litecoin and, and others, uh, Zcash and Monero and, and others like it So and, and Dash. So... Uh, that's the status of what's going on right now, and, and uh, it, we're going to see what happens. It's going to be a very dramatic year. We could see Bitcoin uh, go to like zero uh, if it continues on the way it's going, because people are just going to stop using it. You can't use it anymore. Uh, and I think this is partially a, a plan of uh, the banksters. And if that happens, we will see a lot of people say, I'm never touching a cryptocurrency that isn't regulated by the government ever again. Uh, which is part of their plan, probably. Uh, but we'll, we'll see what happens. It's going. It's it's a, a total battle. It just goes on every day, and we'll see where it goes. But it's it's a total battle right now. 
Yeah. Let's talk about the nasties now, what we can see in 2018 and uh, some suggestions on what people can do with their money to avoid some of what's going to happen or what might happen in 2018. Let's start with Jeff. Uh, that's a pretty uh, general question, but, uh, you know, basically this is the kind of stuff I've been talking about for years. We started the Dollar Vigilante in 2010 uh, with the, the, the tagline, Surviving and Prospering During and After the Dollar Collapse. So we've always been working towards uh, preparing for that and also profiting, and we've profited massively. <laughs> it's been unbelievable how much we've profited. It's, it's been great, actually, uh, looking back upon it. Like, not only are we preparing for what's coming, but we're actually making lots of money while doing it. It's been so much fun. It's been great. But uh, the, um, you know, essentially what, what I was talking about in 2010 was that uh, these fiat, these governments are all bankrupt, as I mentioned, and this is absolutely just common sense now. Uh, even since it, looking back at how much things have changed, even from 2010 is quite amazing. In 2008, the total debt of the U.S. government was around $9 trillion. We're now over $20 trillion, even with that great small government advocate, Donald Trump, who's had the biggest uh, budget deficits in history. Oh, the driller's back. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> Trump fan. Yeah, so, uh, you know, as far as, uh, you know, we're, we're headed towards that. And, and uh, a lot of people used to ask me in 2010 what the, uh, what uh, Bitcoin, uh, or sorry, what would replace the dollar, or what uh, would come after the dollar. And I actually said back then, I said, I don't know, but I'm sure the market will come up with something. And it was 2011 when I first heard about Bitcoin. So it was sort of this amazing timing of, wow, the market's already created the very thing that we need. And it was quite amazing that Bitcoin came out at the very height of the 2008, 2009 financial crisis. And it was actually on purpose. Like they actually put in the very first box, Satoshi Nakamoto put the headline off of uh, the, um, I think it was the UK Guardian, one of the UK papers, saying how all the bank, bankers got bailed out. And that was actually encoded into the very first block of Bitcoin as sort of a, uh, sort of a warning of what's going on or what, why Bitcoin exists is to, uh, man, i got to stop this driller. But, um, but it's going to, uh, you know, so how to prepare and how to, uh, you know, Basically, all the things that we've been doing is what you want to be doing. So we've been into gold and silver since uh, actually my partner, Ed Bugo, since the year 2000. So he started recommending that around $200, $300. So that's done quite well. Uh, things like precious metal stocks, things like hard assets, like real estate, but not necessarily in places like the U.S. because I think that's going to be a real ground zero for this uh, crisis and, and, and collapse that's going to be happening. But maybe perhaps uh, farmland in places like Central America or Latin America or Asia and places like that. Uh, and then, of course, things like cryptocurrencies uh, as well uh, are, are good to own. Uh, but you have to be very nimble and very smart about what's going on. This is not going to be easy. Uh, as I pointed out, Bitcoin could go to zero this year uh, based on everything that's going on. And that will shock a lot of people. A lot of people thought it was going to go up forever. And maybe it will. I have no idea what's going to go on. But my, my point is that uh, it's, you have to be, you know, pay attention to what's going on right now. You can't just, you know, kind of not pay attention and hope everything works out. It's, it's it's going to be tricky, but if you're smart, uh, you can do incredibly well. These are the kind of paradigm shifts uh, that we have in, in human history where generational type wealth can be created. And we've already seen that. I've, I have numerous friends who have been become billionaires in the last five years. Uh, the, you know, the, and the, this is just starting. Like we're, we're not even at the end of this yet. Uh, so, uh, you know, if you're smart and pay attention, you can do very well. Uh, and if you don't, you could actually lose everything. Uh, that we're going to see banks collapse. We're going to see financial systems collapse. We're going to see uh, currencies, fiat currencies just c completely collapse. And this is all mostly by design. So, uh, you know, for the average person who's got most of their money in a bank account somewhere and they're like, oh, I'm just going to keep it there because the, the government uh, uh, insures it with FDIC, which is totally bankrupt. Everything about the government is bankrupt. Uh, and not to mention that they're printing so much money that even in, in 10 years, those dollars won't be worth anything anyway. Uh, you know, you could lose everything in this uh, trend in this um, in the next few years or you could become incredibly wealthy. It's incredibly interesting times. Yeah, it really is. Hey, uh, Jeff, you want to tell us about what you got coming up? Uh, Ann Arcapulco and special guests. I heard about one of your special guests who I'm a big fan of. Yeah, yeah. If you like uh, 1776, you'll like that uh, we uh, just uh, confirmed Ron Paul will be our keynote speaker at Anarchapoco. 
uh, very excited about that. And uh, uh, yeah, so that's coming up February 15th, 18th. It's uh, sort of the biggest true freedom conference in the world. Uh, we talk about true freedom, which means no governments uh, whatsoever, and how we get there, actually. And a lot of the people are creating the solutions to uh, getting rid of government, making it obsolete, essentially. They're doing the things that it does that are good, which is like really nothing. But, you know, the very few things that are kind of okay, things like fire stations and, and things like that, you, those can all be done easily in the, in the free market and so much better and so much cheaper and so much more efficient, of course, when it's not communist-style centrally planned. So uh, that's our, our big conference every year. It's going to probably sell out. So if you want to go, definitely check out and register soon. Uh, it's done phenomenally well. So that's February 15th to the 18th. On the 18th is something called CryptoPoco, uh, which is part of the AnarchoPoco conference, but it's completely focused on blockchain and cryptocurrencies. Uh, going to have people like Roger Veer and Trace Mayer and Dan Larimer of EOS and uh, so many uh, big uh, Jimmy Song, one of the top uh, coders for Bitcoin Core, uh, uh, one of the top uh, coders for Bitcoin Cash. Uh, There's going to be sort of like a Royal Rumble sort of <laughs> debate going on at the conference. And then the day after that, actually, on February 19th, is uh, the Dollar Vigilante Investment Summit, where we get into more investment sort of related things. And you can check it all out at anarchopoco.com. Excellent. Awesome. I've wanted to come for about the last three years. Hopefully, we'll be able to make that. Awesome. All right. Okay. All right, Jeff, any, any closing remarks? No, not really. Uh, just uh, Happy New Year and get ready for a very interesting 2018 coming up. I agree. Up. It's going to be agree. a rock and rolling year for sure. <laughs> Angie, anything? No, thank you guys so much for taking time with us uh, at the start of the new year and Happy New Year to you as well. Excellent. God bless you guys. Take care. You've seen the dollar vigilante on mainstream media trolling the fake news and seen Jeff Berwick travel inside places like Venezuela and Cuba to expose the truth about what's happening in those socialist paradises. To get even more, make sure to subscribe to the Dollar Vigilante newsletter to receive two full 30-plus page issues from the Dollar Vigilante each month, plus market alerts on precious metals, Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, and gold mining stocks by going to dollarvigilante.com slash subscribe. The Dollar Vigilante newsletter earned subscribers a 99% return in 2016 and is on track for more great gains this year. Click on the link in the notes below or go to dollarvigilante.com slash subscribe to find out more.